Hi, I'm Ripper Cleland, and I'm a responsible business expert with a specialism in business and human rights. What this means is that I work with companies to help them minimize their negative impacts on communities, workers, and society, and wherever possible, leave a lasting positive benefit beyond their own bottom line. The example I'd like to share comes from the extractives industry, as this is where I get the most challenge from my friends and family for working with, in their eyes, the big baddies. My response to them is that it's a bit more complex in practice than it can seem from the outside. For example, I was working with an oil company in East Africa who was unable to obtain permits to provide water boreholes to local communities. Yet from the local community's perspective, all they could see was there is a foreign company profiting on natural resources and providing very little in return. Upon digging a little further, it turns out the local authorities were unwilling to provide the permit because they wanted the company to provide piped water to urban voting constituencies rather than boreholes to rural communities who were unlikely to vote. My role was to work with the company to help them understand that they still had a responsibility towards the local communities and that there was a lot more that they could do to try to put some pressure on the government to get those licenses because ultimately this was a human rights issue where the local communities had very little access to clean drinking water and their children were walking long distances every day to obtain it, meaning they're also missing out on school. This is the point that I'd like to end on about when companies use their influence, because recently we've also seen in the US tech firms take a collective stand against Trump's immigration travel ban and these examples raise interesting business ethics questions about who decides when companies can and should use their influence. Thank you.